Blue Beetle scuttles into theaters in late summer 2023. For those unfamiliar with the long history DC character, we've got what you need to know before his big screen debut. Fans have been waiting for a Blue Beetle movie for quite a while at this point. The first whispers about its production began in 2018. Shortly after, news broke that screenwriter Gareth Dunnett Alcocer had agreed to pen the Blue Beetle script. Director Angel Manuel Soto, who garnered attention and acclaim for his 2020 drama Charm City Kings, signed on to the project in 2021. Later that year, Cobra Kai star Sholo Maridueña was in talks to snag the titular role. Principal photography kicked off in May 2022, and filming wrapped up in July. While this steady stream of facts and figures kept fans satisfied for a while, one particular piece of information eluded them for months, the movie's release date. Initially, Blue Beetle was headed for a streaming release on HBO Max, but after some major shakeups at Warner Brothers, it was revealed that Blue Beetle would, in fact, be getting a theatrical release. It will hit theaters on August 18th, 2023. So what's Blue Beetle going to be about? First and foremost, it's about Jaime Reyes. When the movie kicks off, Jaime's at loose ends. He's fresh out of college and back home in Palmera City, feeling lost regarding his future. Things take an unexpected turn when he's entrusted with a mysterious package. You went in to get a job, and all you brought back was a hamburger? Okay, I don't think it's a burger. A mysterious alien object known as the Scarab lurks within its confines, and the shimmering robotic beetle comes to life, then leaps onto Jaime's face. But it doesn't attack him, it bonds with him. In choosing Jaime as its host, the symbiotic Scarab grants him an eye-popping exoskeleton that spreads over his skin like water. Empowered by its alien technology, Jaime becomes the Blue Beetle, capable of wielding an incredible range of superpowers and weaponry. This is pretty exciting stuff, but it's also seriously dangerous. Soon after the Scarab chooses him, Jaime finds himself confronting all manner of adversaries, from mercenary Conrad Carapax to businesswoman Victoria Cord. Luckily, Jaime has his tightly knit family behind him. With their support, he's set to discover what it means to be an adult, a hero, and the legendary Blue Beetle. That closeness of family is something that makes Jaime different. Blue Beetle boasts a packed cast of famous faces and exciting up-and-comers. Cholo Maridueña stars as Jaime Reyes, aka Blue Beetle. Cobra Kai fans will recognize him immediately as Miguel Diaz, Johnny Lawrence's first student. Blue Beetle won't be Maridueña's first time playing a role adapting a comic book. He's lent his voice to children's cartoons Cleopatra in Space and Big Nate, both of which started as comic book series. The most recognizable names in the Blue Beetle cast are probably Susan Sarandon, who plays antagonist Victoria Cord, and George Lopez, who plays Jaime's uncle Rudy. Sarandon is a Hollywood icon beloved for her starring turns in movies like Thelma and Louise, Bull Durham, Enchanted, and The Witches of Eastwick. Meanwhile, Lopez is among the most famous comedians in the world. Jaime's family is rounded out by Adriana Bereza, playing Jaime's grandmother, Damian Alcazar, playing his father, Alpidia Carrillo playing his mother, and Belisa Escobedo playing his little sister. Bruna Marquezina will portray Jenny Cord, Jamie's love interest. Raul Trujillo, widely acclaimed as an actor, dancer, director, and choreographer, will play the ruthless mercenary, Carapax. Additionally, What We Do in the Shadows fans will be pleased to learn that Harvey Guillen is set to appear as Dr. Sanchez. The actor is probably best known as Guillermo, the hapless vampire familiar on the quirky effects series. You can also expect to hear the vocal talents of Becky G, the singer and Power Rangers actor, as she'll portray Kaji Da, the voice of the scarab that gives Jaime his powers. Nice choice. Director Angel Manuel Soto is at the helm of Blue Beetle. Cinephiles are likeliest to know him from Charm City Kings, which hit HBO Max in October 2020. This coming-of-age drama, which is based on the 2013 documentary 12 O'Clock Boys, follows Mouse, a 14-year-old kid from Baltimore who falls in love with motorbikes. Critics adored its eye-catching cinematography, passionate performances, true-to-life portrayal of motorbike culture, and vivid direction. Charm City Kings serves as a powerful mission statement for Soto, which bodes well for Blue Beetle fans. He's interested in what drives young people on the brink of something big, from their own glittering ambitions to their complex family ties. Just as Jaime Reyes must balance what his loved ones expect from him with his own dreams, Mouse must reconcile his love of motorbikes with his mother's desire to keep him away from them and the dangers they pose. DC's recent forays into the multiplex have been complicated to say the least. Some movies like Wonder Woman have been hits, but others like Suicide Squad and Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice went down as infamous critical failures, which hamstrung the DC Extended Universe before it got the chance to really get off the ground. The studio has attempted to address this narrative in a number of ways, but turning to James Gunn has turned out to be the most successful. 
After delivering two bona fide hits in The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, the dynamic director was named co-CEO and co-chair of DC Studios alongside Peter Safran. Now, the two are ready to debut the new DC Universe, and as it turns out, Blue Beetle will be its very first member. This is not to say that Blue Beetle will be the first DCU film. As Gunn clarified on Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum, that honor will belong to Superman Legacy. But Jaime Reyes will be the new universe's very first character. This is a tad bit confusing, but in many ways it makes sense. Blue Beetle is poised to be an ideal bridge between the tumultuous DCEU and the more classic, vibrant, and streamlined DCU. Jaime is hard not to like, and as a newbie to the superhero biz, he's an ideal audience surrogate. As far as entry points go, you arguably can't do better. Since little is known about Gunn and Safran's upcoming universe of DC projects, other than the titles and the heroes involved, it's anyone's guess as to where Blue Beetle might fall on the official timeline. It seems as if the film could be a part of either the former DC Extended Universe, which began in 2013 with Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, or the upcoming DC Universe launching with James Gunn's Superman Legacy. In comics, there have been three different heroes to hold the title of Blue Beetle, and Jaime Reyes is the third in that line. First appearing in 1939, the same year as Batman, the original Blue Beetle, Dan Garrett, was the first to carry the mantle. Garrett held the title until the mid-60s when the second Blue Beetle, Ted Kord, took over. Unlike his predecessor, Kord didn't have a mystical scarab to give him superpowers. He invented all of his own crime-fighting equipment, including his floating vehicle nicknamed The Bug. Jaime became the next Blue Beetle in 2006, right after Kord's death, taking Garrett's scarab and gaining incredible superpowers. From then on, DC Comics promoted the heck out of their new Blue Beetle, advertising and adding him to just about anything they could to get the character out there. In addition to being a recurring character in the animated series Batman the Brave and the Bold and later Young Justice, Jaime's Blue Beetle first appeared in live action opposite Booster Gold in Season 10 of Smallville. Obviously, Jaime is the main character of the Blue Beetle movie, but some nods and references to both Garrett and Cord have led many to believe that the other two Beetles may appear in some capacity. At the very least, you can expect a line of dialogue or two about the former Blue Beetles. Blue Beetle takes place in the DC Universe, so the question of whether any other live-action DC stars will make cameo appearances seems like an obvious one. While we won't know for sure until the movie comes out, it's entirely possible that other major characters who haven't previously been Blue Beetle will also pop their heads in for a moment or two. DC Studios co-head James Gunn has made it clear that Blue Beetle isn't the first chronological DCU film in his highly anticipated Gods and Monsters initiative, but Jaime and his supporting cast could easily be incorporated into whatever plans Gunn and co-head Peter Safran currently have. At a minimum, the Blue Beetle trailer makes mention of the Dark Knight, with Jaime's Uncle Rudy calling out Batman's methods. Whoa. It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. Between a Batman mention and the references to the other Blue Beetles, it's entirely possible that other Justice Leaguers might show up by the end of the flick. There were plenty of secret cameos laced into The Flash, and it isn't exactly a stretch for a superhero movie to tease a bigger universe. With Booster Gold being one of the big projects slated for the upcoming DCU, maybe Blue Beetle will set the stage for his arrival given how closely the two heroes are connected in comics. According to reports, Blue Beetle began production in May 2022 around the Atlanta area. Specifically, the film was shot at Wilder Studios in Decatur. Atlanta is increasingly a hotspot for shooting big-budget movies. Many of Marvel Studios' features have been shot there over the years, and some of the most recent DC films, including Black Adam and Shazam! Fury of the Gods, were shot, at least in part, in Georgia as well. James Gunn's Superman Legacy is also set to film in Atlanta in 2024. Principal photography for Blue Beetle also occurred in Puerto Rico, and in the character's comic book hometown of El Paso, Texas. In the comics, Jaime Reyes comes from the border town of El Paso where he was first bonded to the Scarab and learned to be a superhero. His original comic book series, which ran from 2006 until 2009, largely took place in West Texas, and it looks as if the film is following suit. One thing that always set Jaime apart as a superhero was his strong commitment to his family and friends. He reveals his secret identity to them pretty early on, so filming in the hometown established in comics makes obvious sense. It seems likely that Jaime's supporting cast will be continuously involved in his adventures going forward. Unsurprisingly, Blue Beetle is based on a variety of DC comic stories that might be fun to revisit if you're a fan. According to director Angel Manuel Soto, there are a few in particular that had some real influence on the production of the film. He said at a press event, There are so many great things, from Infinite Crisis to the new series Blue Beetle Graduation Day, which actually took a lot from what we did in the movie. The Jaime Reyes version of Blue Beetle first appeared in the Infinite Crisis event in 2006. 
In the series, Jaime is recruited by Booster Gold and Batman to help spot the rogue AI Brother Eye because Jaime's scarab is the only thing that can see it. Their goal is to stop Brother Eye before it can assimilate all of Earth's metahumans. Though released starting in late 2022, Blue Beetle Graduation Day, as Soto mentioned, actually took inspiration from the Blue Beetle movie by incorporating elements such as Jaime's high school graduation, Palmera City, and Victoria Cord into the DC Comics mythos. It proved that sometimes live-action media dictates the comics, not always the other way around. The director also cited the video game Injustice 2 as an inspiration, as well as the 2011 New 52 Comics relaunch for the specific design of Jaime's alien suit. While the trailers have been playing coy with the exact villains in Blue Beetle, choosing to focus on the relationship between Jaime and his new scarab, a few have already been revealed. The first is Victoria Cord, played by Susan Sarandon. The character was created for the movie, but between the movie's filming and release, she has appeared in comics as the sister of the second Blue Beetle, Ted Cord. Victoria is after the scarab for herself and Cord Industries, and she looks to be a formidable opponent for the newly minted superhero. The scarab chose you. But it belongs to me. Raul Trujillo's Carapax the Indestructible Man is apparently also looking to make trouble for Jaime. Admittedly, Carapax isn't the most recognizable supervillain from the DC Universe, but he originally appeared in the 1980s as a foil for both Dan Garrett and Ted Kord's incarnations of Blue Beetle, again tying prior versions of Blue Beetle to the film. It's possible that the Reach may also be involved. A group of aliens who initially constructed the Scarab, the Reach have been hunting it down ever since it went missing. In the comics, this leads them to El Paso, where all hell breaks loose. Though unconfirmed, it's entirely possible that they'll appear in the film and send their agents to hunt Jaime down. 